subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Interactive session on urology part four. Today's topics of discussion are first renal cell renal cancer and second urinary bladder cancer. So first of all, describe about the classification of renal neoplasm. So the neoplasm having two parts it could be a benign one or the malignant one. Benign neoplasms are which are called the adenoma, renal cyst, angioma, angiomyolipoma, and oncocytoma. These are the benign neoplastic neoplastic lesion. The malignant neoplastic lesions are renal cell carcinoma, which is called adenocarcinoma to nephroblastoma or Owens tumor in case of children. Three, transitional cell carcinoma of renal pelvis and collective systems. Four, renal sarcoma. And last one is metastatic lesion from lung, breast, GI tract, prostate, pancreas, etc. So these are the malignant lesions of kidney. So, First, we discuss about the risk factors for renal cell carcinoma. So, the age groups is really elderly. Obesity is more prone to develop carcinoma kidney, cigarette smoking, hypertension, cystic disease of the kidney associated with chronic renal insufficiency and or dialysis. And lastly, exposure to asbestos. These are the X factors for development of malignant lesions. Firstly, describe about the classification of the renal cyst, which is called Bosniak classification. This is needs to understand for looking the varieties of renal cyst, all the renal cysts are not the benign one. They are some having a malignant presentation of the renal cyst may develop. For that reason, this is the classification. The name is called the Bosnia classification of the renal cyst. So in class one classification, the simple benign cyst, that means the lesions have round or oval shape are unilocular with uniform density of water, have no precipitable wall and do not show enhancement on radiographs and taken after giving contrast medium. That means that evaluation is given by the CT scan. Lesions have round and oval shape. The shape is round or oval and it is a single unilocular. There is no multilocular cyst and uniform density of water that means clear water within the cystic lumen have no precipitation wall, no precipitation there, and no enhancement of radiographs taken after contrast. That means after giving the contrast, there is no enhancement of the periphery of the cyst wall, which compare with the non-contrast film. If the non-contrast film and the contrast film, both the outline of the cyst is the same in uh, concentrations of the dye, there is no change. That means indicates that there is no, it is very simple cyst. It is not a benign cyst. So class one, in case of class two, probably, probably benign cystic lesions that are minimally complicated, minimally complicated. That means the lesions include separated cyst. That means the cysts have merged together one or two cysts each, uh, attached with each other. Minimally calcified cyst, the wall become calcified or there may be some infected or high density cyst. These are probable benign cyst, but that cyst are confirmed is a malignant or not by histopathological examination after removing the 
excision of the cyst. Then about the class 3 classification. More complicated cyst lesions, the cyst exhibit some findings seen in the malignancy such as such as the wall is thick, irregular. The cyst wall is thick, irregular calcifications. It is very important thing is irregular border, irregular calcifications and multilocular forms thickened or enhancing septa, uniform thickening of the wall or small non-enhancing nodules. These are more complicated cystic lesions. These are not the clean cut benign cystic lesions. These are the complicated cystic lesions. Class 4 one, clearly malignant cystic masses. That classification can directly dictate that the patient having a malignant cystic lesion disease. That means the appearance of these lesions result from necrosis and liquefaction of a solid tumor and a tumor growing into the wall. And lesions are heterogeneous with a shaggy appearance, thickened walls or enhancing nodules. These all All are the features of these. All are the features of clearly malignant cystic mass. That means appearance of these lesions results from necrosis and liquefaction of a solid tumor. So liquefaction causing the lesion become cystic one. After liquefaction necrosis and liquefaction causing the solid lesion converted into cystic lesions. And the tumor growing into the wall, in the wall in, within the wall, the tumor is grows and lesions are heterogeneous with the shaggy appearance, thickened walls or enhancing nodules. That means after giving the contrast, the nodules become take the contrast and more enhances there, which dictates that the patient is more vascular, that means the patient is malignant one. So these are the classification of Bosnia classification of random cyst. So next about the staging of renal cancer. That staging of the renal cancer is depends upon the TNM classifications. That means in case of stage one, so look, there is a kidney and there is hilum and there is a capsule which is called the gerodus fascia. There's gerodus fascia having a tendency to localize the malignancy within that capsule. So it is the main aim of the diseases and that can dictate what type of clearance surgery is subsequently possible. If the Malignant cells infiltrate the capsule, go exterior. That means that curative surgery may not be possible because if the lesion within the capsule, if we remove the kidney along with the gerodus fascia, so intact whole of the malignant cells excised exteriorly, so the patient is free from the malignant cells, the curative surgery is more possible. For that reason, also the gerodus fascia is a main barrier of the individual which prevents the malignancy spread from the kidney to the exterior perineptic tissues etc. So stage one tumor, the tumor is less than seven centimeter in greatest dimension. When the lesion is rounded one or oblique one, the lesion is measured by various planes. The maximum greatest dimension if it is less than seven centimeter and the limited to the kidney, it is limited to the kidney, then the lesion is called stage one and the, the result of surgery is very good. Five years survival is 95%. 95% people can survive five years. So the result is more better. It depends upon the size of the lesion. For that reason, the stage one, the tumor is less than seven centimeters in greatest dimension and limited to the kidney. Stage two, when the tumor is more than seven centimeters in greatest dimension and limited to the kidney, the lesion within the kidney, only the size is larger. So increase the size, causing decrease, decrease the prognosis. That means in case of stage two, 
if the patient present to you and do the surgery, the result of surgery is five years survival in 88 percent. So in case of less than seven centimeter, the survival rate is 95 percent five years. But whenever the size more than seven, though the lesion is limited within the kidney, but the result of the outcome is five years survival declining to 88 percent. In case of stage three, that means the tumor enters inside the veins or the tumor go enters inside the adrenal glands because the renal capsule densely adherent in the upper pool on the both side there is a gland which is called the adrenal gland so, so the tumor in major veins when the tumor it invade the major veins this is renal veins or it invade the adrenal glands tumor within the gerodas fossa but the tumor is within the gerodas fossa or a regional lymph node involved there is a lymph node in the regional one involved then the survival is declining to five year survival is 59 percent so increase the size increase the peripheral involvement of the tissues in decreases the survival of the patient so prognosis mainly depends on the size and the localization of the lesion is in case of stage four when the tumor is beyond the gerodas fascia it means the tumor cell penetrate beyond the gerodas fascia outside the gerodas fascia so it is a stage four or the patient is a lesion is there but the regional lymph node is more than one centimeter in size then the prognosis also declining it is very bad prognosis which is only 20 percent five years survival so the survival depends upon the lymph node involvement and the involvement of the gerodas fascia if the gerodas fascia is fired, the disease is advanced. If the lymph node is more increased in size at your presentation, it is more than one centimeter, the lesion is advanced. So the prognosis, prognosis is poor. So these are about the T and that means tumor categorization. And the regional lymph nodes are when there is no regional lymph nodes, metastasis N0. When the metastasis lymph node region uh, is single regional lymph node involvement N1. When medicine more than one regional lymph nodes, if it is a single one lymph node only enlarged there, during operation you move it out and look, there is a metastasis or not. If the single node is involved, there is N2, N1, and if it is more than two, it is called N2. And when the lesion, metastatic cell migrate, when the cancer cell is spread distally, then the lesion is called the M1, distal metastasis. That means bones, heart, lungs, heart, etc. Then it is called M1, distant metastasis. So the tumor is enters outside the gerodas fascia or infiltrate the adrenal gland or the lesion is go inside the vein, through the renal vein, go there, ultimately it go into the inferior vena cava. It may go into the heart also. So the renal cell carcinoma having a tendency to migrate through the vein to the vena cava, it may go into the heart also. What are the presentations of the renal cell carcinoma? The renal cell carcinoma may not cause symptom in its early stage. It is very important thing is. In early stage, the tumor is localized within the periphery of the tissue, if localized there, there is no obstructive symptoms, no erosion of the calyces, no erosion of the pelvises, so there is no bleeding, no immaturia, no pain is there. For that reason, the patient of renal cell carcinoma may not cause symptoms in early stages. Because whenever the lesion at the pelvis, near the pelvis, then it causing the obstruction, or the lesion causing the obstruction of the ostium of the calyces, then there is a distension, retention of the urine inside the pelvis, calyces, there is a hydronomotic change, there is a back pressure change, stasis, infection, subsequent pain, and the patient may present. But in case of lesion in the periphery of the cranial tissues, it does not involve the calyces or the pelvises. There is no immaturia, no obstruction, no symptom. For that is in an early stage, the patient may present as in no symptom there, may not cause symptoms in early stage. These tumors are often detected incidentally. Suppose the patient having 
for other reasons do an ultrasonic with the whole abdomen so at that time the incident rate detected that there is a lesion in the kidney and after evaluate the lesion by other investigations subsequently the patient diagnosed that the patient having a carcinoma kidney that means renal carcinoma there for that is the presentation may be asymptomatic or may be symptomatic asymptomatic one usually are smaller size usually asymptomatic present but in case of larger size then the patient may present it or it is a smaller one but is invade the renal pyramid or it invade the renal calyx at that time the patient may present so the presentation are pain and hematuria this is the two main presentations and lastly one is a palpable mass this is the three presentations mainly one is hematuria everybody about conscious about the color of the urine if the urine color is red then they notice that there is a red color urine then go for the examination the why that urine is color red then examination done and ultimately the patient detected that the patient having lesion in the kidney or that is present in the 40% patient usually present with hematuria and some people may present with the flank pain that flank pain may be due to the obstruction of the calyces or the flank pain is due to the involving the capric gyrodas fascia exterior then may causing some flank pain or there is a bleeding hematuria causing clot retention so clot retention over the ureter or the pelvis is, there is obstruction there is a more distension of the pelvis is, that the patient may feel pain so flank pain is noticeable in case of 40% of the patients and whenever the lesion is large enough at that time the patient may notice there some mass or lump in the abdomen so palpable abdominal mass is presented to 25% of the cases so that 25% cases are presented as lately not the early one late presentations so other symptoms are their symptoms are present in most of the malignancy associated to some extent like weight loss that weight loss is presented 33% anorexia nausea etc for that is the patient weight loss and the patient having a pyrexia of unknown origin there is no infection there but the patient may present with a pyrexia so that pyrexia one and origin one of the cause is renal cell carcinoma so do an ultrasonography to evaluate the patient having a, any mass lesion in the kidney or not others are hypertension hypercalcemia lethargy malaise and very important thing is on the left side the patient may present with some varicocele that means tortuosity dilatation of the vein during the testes vein draining the testes so the patient does not having any source of swelling in the scrotum subsequently recently the patient developed the scrotum there is swelling which having just feeling like a earthworm feeling inside the scrotum that means there is a vascular channel there more prominent on the left side because in the left side the presentation is whenever the kidney Uh, on the left side the patient having an adenal carcinoma it invade the vein and through the vessels migrated through the renal vein go to the vena cava during the migration the left renal testicular vein opens at the left renal vein so during the opening of the left renal vein is occluded by the malignant cells so the venous drainage is not developed or is not done through the testicular vein for that is there is a stasis so the left testicular venous plexus are enlarged which presented as a varicose but the varicose is, is the cause is it is called secondary varicose it is not the primary one the cause is known that means <coughs> the cause is known that the, the lesion in the kidney left side which invade the vena cava uh, renal vein causing occlude the lumen and the presented as a varicose presentation so sometimes the patient also only the presented with the varicocele for that reason whenever a patient present to you with the varicocele always do an ultrasonography with the scrotum along with the <coughs> kob region because the patient may presented along with the renal cell carcinoma on the left side for that reason do an investigation ultrasonography of the scrotum and the kob region 
so kidney must be violated that there is any lesion or not some other presentation is only 5% of cases these are non specific syndromes like anemia non metastatic abnormal liver function tests stover syndrome some immunological syndrome that with neuropathy specific endocrine syndromes occur as a result of hyper secretions the adrenal hormones that renin and erythropoietin factors release which causing some specific endocrine syndromes specific endocrine syndromes are non adrenal hormones like parathormone gonadotropin that causing some syndrome so these are the presentation what investigations the investigation laboratory findings complete blood picture blood count so look about the hemoglobin it is the main parameters what is the hemoglobin is urine analysis reveals microscopic hematuria in most cases liver function test to exclude any metastasis serum calcium increased or not and other imaging studies but there is another one is urine analysis and urine for cytology so collect urine in a container for 24 hours then the urine is centrifuged from the centrifuged materials sediments examine the cytology is there any malignant cell or not sometimes it may be diagnosed earlier the patient may having a malignancy there malignant cell there so other imaging are ct scan is the gold standard for staging of the renal carcinoma it is a very important thing is ct scan by doing the ct scan you can evaluate the lesion size site extension and also the contrast enhancement or not you can evaluate the others are ct guided fns it is more accurate the lesion site put in needle take some cells Examine it under microscope, microscope examination, and diagnose. Then you diagnose that the patient has malignancy or not. And ultrasonography helps in distinguishing cystic lesion from the solid masses. It is also an important one. Ultrasonography and plain X-ray abdomen. It does not directly diagnose the malignancy. It directly evidence that there is reveals a calcified renal mass. in the renal regions if there is calcified renal shadow mass shadow there are you suspected that the patient may having malignancy there ivu is the starting point for evaluating hematuria but that ivu is in investigation of choice previous in our days it is not the confirmatory test but the main confirmatory is the ct scan evaluation the ivu whenever the renal mass the calices are compressed and there is a lesion which reveals a spider like deformity of the pelvis uh, calices calicial system pelvic calicial system spider like appearance that spider like appearance also present in case of benign cystic lesion polycystic kidney also but the basic difference is the outline of malignancy the spider like deformity the outline of the calices margin is irregular but in case of benign cystic lesion This is spider-like deformity appearance, but the outline of the calices are smooth in outline. It is the main evaluating factors to differentiate between a benign lesion of the kidney and the malignant lesion of the kidney. MRI excellent demonstrations of the solid masses and is image test of choice to demonstrate extent of the vena cava involvement with tumor. It is also very important thing. It is the extension of the tumor from the tumor through the renal vein. what is the status of the vena cava can also evaluate it by mri and also ct scan can evaluate there is a thrombus seen inside the lumen of the renal vein or the vena cava or not because if the lesion is involving the vena cava involving the renal vein then your vascular approach is needed during surgery otherwise the surgery is not uh, is not curative surgery possible because if you don't open the vena cava remove the renal masses the remaining cells is left there so there is chance of metastasis more for that reason the lesion inside the vena cava also cleared clear during surgery if it is detected before doing the surgery 
So look about the chest X-ray. It is a very important one. There is a white opacity there, 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 there. These are not, may not. These are the bronchus probably, but the peripheral one. These these lesions are, which is seen secondary lesion in the lungs, which is called the cannonball appearance. And bone metastasis can evaluate by doing an isotope bone scan. So this is a CT scan. That CT scan picture is taken day, two days before, uh, three to four days before. This is one of the patient present to me. That there is a lump. The patient presented his lump in the loin. It is the main presentation, nothing else. The patient is about 70 years of age and weight loss anorexia. So after doing that, on examination reveals there is a lesion in the right lumbar region. So for that reason, I do a CT scan. This is the CT scan findings. So look and read the findings of CT scan. So the test name is 128 slice CT KOB contrast. It is a very important thing. Yes. The CT scan machine having a various modalities of machine in the market. In the older version is called the single slice CT scan, dual slice CT scan. Nowadays the CT scan is called the multi slice CT scan. That multi slice can again more importance is more the slices, more the image high quality. So this CT scan is done in the 128 slice. They are having some available in the market, which is 250, six slice, and more. Some very few machines are more than 250 slice. So more the slice capacity, more the image quality, and more delineate the disease process. So this is a 120 slice scan, and there is written along with the disease is CT KUB with contrast. That means it is not a plain CT. It is a contrast CT. That means contrast CT. KOB region, CT urography. The other name is CT scan of urography. So the techniques is multiple axial ex and CT reformat images were obtained by volumetric acquisitions. This is the technique. 3D reconstruction done. For that reason, you take some films in various directions. The findings are right kidney is normal in size, position, and normal excretion. Bipolar length of the right kidney is 10 cm. Nearly rounded mixed density. Look, nearly rounded mixed density mass noted in the lower part of the right kidney involving posterior aspect. So the lesion is like the lower, nearly rounded mixed density, mixed density mass noted in the lower part involving the posterior space. So the kidney having anterior surface, posterior surface, the lesion in the posterior surface. Size of the mass is 34, that means 3.4 cm into 3.4 cm into 3.5 cm. The lesion is. That means around one and a half inch in size. And there is a faint necrotic area. The description is clearly, clearly demonstrated there. Faint necrotic areas are seen within the masses. So the description is given in the class, cyst classification. There is a necrosis. So that this necrosis also find this, this, this image report. No calcification is seen. So calcifications are not always seen. The mass abutting, sorry. The mass abutting adjacent calices, that means it adjacent calyx is compressed, right renal pelvis and major calyces are separated from the mass. That means it does not involve the pelvises and major calyces. After IV contrast, the mass shows heterogeneous enhancement. That means the lesion, which is not the homogeneous one, heterogeneous. Whenever there is heterogeneous lesion, always suspected that the lesion is malignant one. The kidney shows normal excretion. That means from the kidney, the ureter can easily carry out the urine from the kidney. For that reason, for that reason they say that the kidney shows normal excretions. Right renal vein, inferior vena cava shows no evidence of thrombosis. Look, it is very important that findings can easily given there 
right renal vein and inferior vena cava shows no evidence of thrombosis. That means it doesn't invade the renal veins. And renal artery appears normal. No accessory right renal artery noted. It is important thing one. If there is accessory renal artery is there during surgery, you can search the accessory renal artery. So there is less chance of injury of the renal artery. And right ureter is normal in normal caliber, no calculus or mass is seen. The left is normal one. So another important thing is incidental of findings, hypertense structure noted within the gallbladder is sludge or gallbladder stones. The impression right renal mass possibly RCC. That means renal cell carcinoma possibly because they are not confirmed 100 percent that the malignant one. The malignancy confirmed by histopathological examination. For that reasons. The radiologist can save regarded. He's commented that possibly RCC. It, he does not given directly comment about RCC. Always they give some clue. That means the possibility is a safety. If there is any so subsequently after operation, there is no malignancy there, then he can protect that. I say that there is a possibility of RCC. It is not say confirm it is RCC. For that reason, they are written, they are written, they are written there, possibly RCC. So look at the picture. This is the right kidney, this is the left kidney. So this, that lesion is seen in the in peripheral part of the kidney. For that reason, the lesion is not presented as a obstructive symptom that means pain or the hematuria, etc. So look, there is far away from the renal pelvis, the lesion is. So look the other pictures. So this is 3D reconstruction picture of the CT urography. Look, these are the calices, these are the pelvis, and this is the ureter. So both the things are same on the on, the, on their side and their side. So this is the ureter bladder. So look, there is a lesion there, lesion there on the right side. So in subsequent film, subsequent film, look there, there is a heterogeneous. Some part is necrosis there. So the it is a hypertense area. It is a hypertense area. So that hypertense area indicates it is a necrosis area of the tumor masses. For that reason, in the report written, there is a necrosis of the tumor necrosis at the center. So this is the lesion there. What about the treatment? What about the treatment? So the treatment, in case of localized renal cancer, the treatment is radical nephrectomy. Is the gold standard treatment of localized renal cell carcinoma. So radically, you can remove the whole of the kidney along with the adrenal gland, along with the generator's fascia. So there is no possibility to any settling there, and mass can remove it out. It involves the renal, it involves the removal of the kidney, adrenal gland, perinephric fat, gerodas fascia, with or without regional lymph node dissections. If it is a localized renal cancer, in that case, with or without, there is a localized one, there is no lymph node involvement for that reason, say, with or without. And can be done in open or laparoscopic one or by robotic approach. But whenever the lesion is involved, the vena cava, in that case, the vena cable tumor mass must be removed. So it is called the vena cable thrombectomy. The whole of the thrombus needs to remove it out. So in that cases, in case of tumor invasion into the renal vena vein or vena cava, so here the surgeon must obtain control of the vena cava above and below the tumor extension as the first priority. So suppose the lesion involved the vena cava, renal vein, so first make a sling over there, another sling is there. So if you don't take the sling over there, so there is a chance of during manipulation, the chance of this loss of the thrombus go to the heart and the patient may die or the patient develop stroke, pulmonary embolism, the patient may die. For that reason, involvement of the vena cava needs to put some sling there so it is controlled there, then open the vena cava and the thrombus pull it out 
repair the vena cava. So these are about the, in case of localized renal cancer and the vena cava involvement, and then it is the treatment. But nowadays, the world is more faster. They want to preserve the organ. For that reason, whenever the lesion over the kidney, so the patient, the patient and the surgeon and the physician, the nephrologist, they all concerned. They are more about to save the organ. That means you remove the disease, but you take the kidney there. So whenever the kidney remains in the situ, so at that time you remove the kidney. That means you part of the kidney along with the tumor masses whenever excised. It is called a nephron sparing surgery. That means you spare the nephron to some extent the nephron remains there. For that it is called nephron sparing surgery. That means you don't remove the whole kidney. You only remove the diseased part of the kidney along with to some extent the clear margin of the normal tissues. This is called the nephron sparing surgery. So the indication of the nephron sparing surgery is if the lesion that means malignancy is bilateral kidney. So if the patient has bilateral renal cell carcinoma, so if you remove both the kidney, the patient is not capable to survive without kidney. The patient needs to routine dialysis or the kidney transfer subsequently. For that reason, in case of bilateral renal cell carcinoma, you must do and if possible do the nephron sparing surgery. That means partial nephrectomy. And another one is RCC in a solitary functioning kidney. That means the individual having kidney, but the one kidney is only functioning there, or only one kidney having a congenital one single kidney. That kidney having the lesion over the renal cell carcinoma. So if you remove the kidney, the patient is kidneyless. So it is, the patient is not possible to survive. So for that reason, you do the nephron sparing surgery. Try to do a nephron sparing surgery to lengthen the life with a normal functioning to some extent of the kidney. Another one is congenital absence of a contralateral kidney. Disease kidney on one side, the other kidney is congenital absence. That means unilateral kidney if you have it. Or unilateral renal cell carcinoma with contralateral kidney under threat of future function. That means renal arthritis stenosis, chronic pyelonephritis, hydronephritic kidney, chronic obstruction of the PUG junction, systemic disease such as diabetes. So these are all factors you consider for the nephron sparing surgery, you don't try to remove the whole kidney, you preserve the kidney as far as possible. And another important thing is tumor less than four centimeters with normal opposite kidney. It is a very important landmark or demarcating point to do the kidney, that means nephron sparing surgery, if the tumor is less than four centimeters with normal opposite kidney. So this is about the nephron sparing surgery. Look, the picture is. The lesion is remains there. So you cut the lesion along with the normal due to some extent. So excise the part. And that part always send for histopathological examination. That means paraparative histopathological examination, which is called frozen section bias. Be careful about it. Because you remove the kidney you remove the part of the kidney and your aim is to treat the patient free from cancer cell of the kidney. So if you don't do the histopathological examination, you don't confirm that the lesion is free from the remaining part of the kidney having no cancer cell there. So that is clearance is given by histopathological examination. The histopathology slide is taken from the inner side of the lesion, surface of the lesions, so they can easily say the inner side, if it is a lesion, there is any cancer cell or not. If there is no cancer cell in histopathology, then the lesion is cleared properly. That means you can free the patient from the cancer cell at the site of the lesion. For that reason, do and frozen section biopsy. The important thing is the difference between the frozen section pathology, histopathology, and conventional histopathology is difference is the frozen section report is given within 20, 30 to 45 minutes. 
can possibly to do it but in case of conventional histopathological examination which needs at least 24 to 48 hours so in case of frozen section biopsy the histopathologist can waiting in the laboratory starting the frozen section machine because the lesion whenever sent from the theater to the laboratory the in the operation theater the frozen section facilities must be attached with the nearby hospital nearby hospital operation theater in the same flow so immediately send the specimen to the laboratory so they can process and take the slides so in that process they do it by the specimen sent within the machine which causing the freeze the tissue so freeze the tissue causing hardening so then easily cut the tissue and then stain and examine but in case of normal hospital examination they're done with the paraffin section block it takes time hydration of the cells dehydration of the cells and rehydration of the cells and then paraffin blocks then make the uh, blocks and staining and examine the stupidal slides but in case of frozen section it can done no need of paraffin block it done by cryo that means they, that means freeze the tissue so that you become hard and immediately cut and after during operation whenever the histopathologist give the opinion that your cut margin is free of malignant cells then you're satisfied then you close the abdomen otherwise you don't close it you wait to some extent but the opinion is if the lesion histopathological report frozen section that given that there is not free there is some cancer cell on the inner side then you need to the more excise the part more again send to the histopathology examination and confirm it then go for whenever their lesion is confirmed there is no cells then you close that otherwise you don't close the abdomen you wait and see for further confirmations so this is about the uh, nephron sparing surgery and is a partial nephrectomy that means it's technically challenging and involves removal of the tumor with a thin margin of the adjacent normal tissues the commonest complication of this procedure is urinary fistula that means you cut the tissues so you open the calyces you repair the calyces subsequently the some urine of maybe leak for there is a complication of urinary fistula can be done as an open for the leprosy procedure what you are able to facilities are available you can do it and other methods are various minimally invasive nephron sparing procedures are available such as radio frequency ablation and cryo ablation by applying the radio frequency the tumor cell will become destroyed or the cryo ablation and destroy the tumor cells so the rest of the kidney becomes spare they are saved there for that is it is called nephron sparing surgery but these are things are not required for undergraduate students you just reach your knowledge what far the treatment process going on for that is it needed but for your undergraduate level it does not need it for your exam your only treatment is radical nephrectomy or radical partial nephrectomy is sufficient what about the treatment of metastatic disease not only all the patient are not presented with the, only the kidney disease they presented with some distal metastasis so you need some treatment of the whenever the patient advanced diseases come to you need to some extent of treatment for palliation treatment needed so in that cases the surgery that means you remove the kidney but remove the kidney is not for the cure it only for the decrease the burden load of the tumor mass of the body so if there is remains the kidney is there so there is a more irritation there the patient may present a more bleeding there so the patient may die due to the hemorrhage hematuria for that aim or the patient may develop hydrated hydrophobic changes for that is the patient need to remove the kidney if another kidney is functioning so the tumor burden can declining by removing that tumor masses and the kidneys kidney the other is palliative one you can do with some radiotherapy so radiotherapy whenever apply over the site of lesion metastatic site the tumor cells die so the tumor cell dies so the patient may pressure effect become declining over the site of metastasis and some chemotherapy combination of 5 fluoroacetyl and gemcitabine the combination to some extent may given and other as immunotherapy interferon 1 interleukin 2 that can prescribe to the patient to boost up the immune system and to some extent control the diseases 
And another important thing is nowadays, which is called is a targeted molecular therapy. These are the very specific target cell. That means new treatment approach, which targets only the cancer. In this case, uses drugs that stop the new blood vessels from growing and target certain factors that cause the cells to grow. For example, tyrosine kinase inhibitors. If you prescribe the tyrosine kinase inhibitors, that can blocks the new angiogenesis at the tumor size, tumor size, and other is gene therapy. So these are about the treatment of the renal cell carcinoma. Now look, there is a radical nephrectomy. It is one of the video presentation of Indian Asian Institutes of Nephrology and Neurology. So these are the various course given. So look, the bioforceps, they hold the diaphragm. So lift the liver, does not fall down over the right kidney. So look, the tumor mass is not manipulated, just lift up and a dissection done between the colon and the kidney. Because the body is manufactured by the Latala in, the, in such a manner that every structure to place to each other nearby, but there is a loose cellular tissue. So that loose cellular tissue we can dissect, we can manipulate, we can separate from the other organs of the body. For the look, very easily they can separate it without manipulate the tumor mass. So if you do the open surgery, in that case is to manipulate the tumor mass, so there is more chance of metastasis. In case of laparoscopy one, you look, they can dissect the hilum, directly go there. So smaller vessels are clipped, then divided with the harmonic, uh, that means thunderbolt diathermy, uh, ultrasonic diathermy one. So dissect the vein, the artery is there. So first hold the artery, so if the First, hold the vein, there is a more chance of congestion of the renal mass and tumor. For that reason, first hold the artery. Then, renal artery is divided, clear. Subsequently, they identify the renal vein and divide it. Hello? They divide the ureter. So, the kidney tissue is separated. So all the kidneys separated from the from the muscular connections and the urinary connections. Then the tumor mass is removed with the with the travel back through a separate incision over the fenestral, over the lower abdomen fenestral incision. So the outcome is so fine, less pain, easily can the patient moves and from the next day mornings he can take mouth on the after 24 hours and the patient can discharge within two to three days so the outcome is very good there is a less chance of incisional hernia for that reason the laparoscopic surgery done in case of renal tumor or renal cancer if it is expert enough easily can do it the renal tumor by laparoscopically and by doing the uh, robotic excision you can easily done it is more precisely because the robotic forceps having a 360 degree manipulation of the front edge of the kidney, front, front edge of the instrument. It is very easily can manipulate. So all direction you can move and easily can dissect it. So robotic one is the best one. Next option is the laparoscopy one. So look at the robotic surgery, a robotic assisted radical nephrectomy. Look, the patient is positioning by the surgeon, first assistant, then the placed all the robot arm are placed by the assistant. Then look, the, by the robot, they can, robotic arm, they apply the clips. So the relation of the kidney, you cut the artery. The vein, divide it. Then cut it. So apply the clip down.
but here the picture is given there just make an incision above the upper pole to save the adrenal gland but in case of radical nephrectomy the adrenal gland must be needed to remove along with the kidney so the put in the retrieval bag close the bag and remove it out so these are about the then remove the arm of the robot that means that arm is one room the surgeon is is a console the surgeon is sitting there from there he manipulate all the arms so which is called the robotic surgery the next one we can discuss about the bladder carcinoma So the histological classifications, the bladder carcinoma having a various types maybe, which is called the transitional cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, adenocarcinoma, small cell carcinoma, and rare tumor sarcoma. So transitional cell, the lining is a transitional cell. For that reason, it is 90% developed transitional carcinoma. But squamous cell carcinoma may develop in 3% of cases. So that 3% is developed in those cases where the patient having a undiagnosed having a bladder stone. The big bladder stone remains years together. So that stone causing irritate the bladder mucosa. So there is a transformation of the transitional cell going to the squamous cell and ultimately the patient develops carcinoma. carcinoma. Or the patient having a bilharziasis the patient may develop squamous cell carcinoma. In case of adenocarcinoma, which is developed usually in the uracal end, that means the end which attached with the umbilicus, in that type area may develop the adenocarcinoma. And very rare small cell carcinoma may develop. And rarely tumor in the muscles is called the sarcoma. Sarcoma in the urinary bladder. So look, it is appearance is there the from the epithelium they are projected there so lamina propria and the muscle coat and the pant so the risk factors the risk factors usually age over the age of 40 years are suffering the gender men are more susceptible than the female and occupational relation they are Exposure to industrial carcinogens like aromatic hydrocarbons like aniline dyes to naphthalamine and benzidine. If the liver are exposure with that agency long time, that may transformation the bladder cancer to some extent. And exposure to the environmental carcinogen like arsenic. Cigarette smoker having a more tendency to develop carcinoma bladder. Use some drugs long time like phenacetin, cyclophosphamide, and infection like cystosoma hematobia, hematobia, cystosoma hematobia, that causing some infection and causing subsequently there is a development of cancer and chronic UTI following repeated urinary catheterizations. That means irritations, chronic irritation, the chronic irritation may cause the carcinoma of bladder. So staging of the bladder cancer, there is staging depends upon the tumor site lesion and the depthness of the lesions. It is the important thing it is. The depthness is when the tumor is only involved in the mucous membrane, that means it is which is called carcinoma in situ, it is within the mucous membrane and TA is popularly known invasive carcinoma. The tumor is protruded, it is not a flat, it is protruded, projected in the lumen of the bladder. T1, that tumor is inside the mucous membrane, infiltrated in the lamina propria. T2, infiltrated in the muscle. That means when the superficial muscle is invaded, the tumor is called the TA. When the deep muscle is invaded, it is called the T2B. And T3 tumor infiltrate the perivesical tissues. And 3M microscopically invasion of the deep muscles. It is called 3A. And 3B 
the macroscopically extension through the bladder wall and four is tumor infiltrating the periviscular organs four a carcinoma involving the prostate uterus vagina etc or four b carcinoma invading the abdominal or pelvic wall a lymph node n0 non lymph node 1 to 3 is the n1 2 3 etc distal metastasis which is called the m1 so these are the staging of the tumor bladder cancer so what presentations it is important thing is macroscopy painless hematuria it is important thing it is painful hematuria is a good luck for the patient that means most likely it is not a malignant one but the painless hematuria is a very dangerous very seriously evaluate the patient may develop may having a cancer representation as a hematuria and some irritated syndromes of frequency urgency that depends upon the involvement of the trigon urethra etc advanced cases the patient present with weight loss lower abdominal pain palpable abdominal mass arising from the pelvis etc pain in the loin or features of infection may be present if the tumor obstructs the ureter these are the very very rare very advanced cases and lately pain referred to the suprapubic region groin perineum anus into the thigh these are involvement uh, involve uh, involvement these are depends upon the involvement of the nerves so investigations urine cytology for malignant cells this is not a good screening test because in low grade tumors malignant cells may not be identified unless a specimen obtained from the bladder wash out is possible blood estimation of hemoglobin serum electrolyte creatinine etc these are the renal function or evaluation and the hemoglobin status it, it, it reflected the hematuria level r what about the intravenous urography these should be performed in patient with hematuria the most common radiological sign is filling defect occasionally irregularity of the bladder wall may dictate the presence of an invasion tumor hydrophobic can occur if there is superficial tumor which grows up intramural ureter or if direct invasion of the ureteric wall then block the ureter and cause hydrophobic change that means if the lesions in and around the ureteric opening then the patient presented with the hydrophobic hydrophobic at that time the patient may present with some pain and cystoscopic examination and the biopsy it is the main step of diagnosis say how many lesions over there what is the site of the lesion is and what is the appearance is you can directly look there is direct confirmatory and take the tissue and biopsy and also that biopsy can confirm you that what is the involvement of the muscle pores are ultrasound of the abdomen and pelvis it is a very important tool to evaluate that is when the blood is fully distended it can easily evaluate the inside of the lumen inside the mucous membrane inside the muscle involvement all can be evaluated by looking in ultrasonography but a ct scan is also a direct evidence by looking the ct you can evaluate the lesions involvement of the muscle could also mri also take part role to evaluate the blood carcinoma so look if if you introduce a flexible cystoscope it is a flexible one eh, that flexible cystoscope whenever introduced there is the irrigation channel so in case of investigations of a flexible cyst erythrocystoscope whenever you introduce the flexible erythrocystoscope look the bladder side inside there is a front like projection there so there this is the diagnostic that the patient having a tcc transition carcinoma or papilloma the carcinoma is confirmed by histopathology information so the clinical di diagnostic there is a papilloma So what about the treatment for non invasive tumor that means carcinoma C2 T and T1 there is some immunotherapy takes part role as a treatment that means intravesical immunotherapy that means the agent which introduce into install the urinary bladder keep it there change the posture the supine Lateral, left lateral, right lateral, prone position. 
10 to 20 minutes on each position. So all the drugs are touches with the whole of the bladder wall and then you remove uh, the catheter and remove it out all the content which remains inside the bladder. This is called the immunotherapy. That means in case of immunotherapy that used as an adjuvant treatment with resection to prevent recurrence. That means just after excision or day after excision, day after uh, morning of the excision, they install the BCG within the bladder. That means it di does not directly give the injection. It mixed with normal saline and placed over the renal bladder. Or other agents are BCG, that means bacillus calmate urine. It is a vaccine. And that vaccine injection mixed with normal saline, install the renal bladder and it can prevent further recurrence of the bladder carcinoma. Or sometimes they can give the mitomycin C, epirobicin, doxorobicin. These are the chemotherapeutic agents. For invasive tumors, that means T2 or greater, that means when the deep muscle coat is involved, then new adjuvant chemotherapy 12 weeks prior to cystectomy. In case of T2, the treatment is you remove if you remove the whole urinary bladder, the patient becomes cured, radical cystectomy. So before that, if you give the new adjuvant chemotherapy 12 weeks prior to cystectomy, that means agents are M back. M means methotrexate. V means venblastin, F in adriamycin, then doxorobicin, C for C splatin. So MBAC therapy can give before doing surgery, 12 weeks prior to cystectomy. Then surgical options are for non-invasive tumors for CIS, T81, it is very simple treatment is endoscopy treatment, T-U-R-B-T. So transurethral resect out the tissue for that is in the name of his resection of bladder tumor t-u-r-b-t in case of prostate t-u-r-p prostate resection of the prostatic tissue for the t-u-r-p but here it is the t-u-r-b-t in the exam your question is what is the name of the surgical name of the bladder cancer tumor is the answer is t-u-r-b-t t-u-r-b-t transurethral resection of bladder tumor Followed by, very important thing is, sending the specimen for histopathological examination. Resect the tumor, collect it and send for histopathological examination. According to the histopathological report, the treatment further depends on the further staying. The muscle code is involved or not. Superficial muscle or deep muscle is easily dictated by the histopathological specimen findings. And others are TURBT and laser fulguration of the product. But in case of TURBT, uh, electroquatery, that means bipolar TURBT, in that case by electrode, the tumor must become ablated. In that case, you cannot capable to send the specimen for special examination properly. So TURBT by resection is the best one for evaluation the extension of the disease. And after that, you can decide it. The patient needs radical cystectomy. If the patient is radical cystectomy, so the patient with unresectable tumors, multiple focus is there, which is not possible to remove it out in that or prostatic urethral involvement in that cases or BCG failure, BCG therapy is given, but it does not respond. There is a recurrence. In that case, you need to go for radical cystectomy. It means all of the bladder is excised. Then the ureter is diverted exterior or the ureter is implanted in the in rectum or the new bladder is form formation there orthotopic bladder formation there and when uh, and place in situ so surgical options are for invasive tumors radical cystoprostatectomy we are careful about it radical cystoprostatectomy in case of female with pelvic lymphadenectomy always malignant surgery curation is depends upon the tumor mass along with the lymphatics if you don't remove the lymphatics there is a seedling remains there, tissue remains there, so there is a chance of recurrence again. For that is a radical cystoprostatectomy with pelvic lymphadenectomy. Removing the bladder, prostate and pelvic lymph nodes. After removal of the bladder, urinary diversion must be created. Otherwise, the ureter is open inside the abdomen, the urine accumulated inside the abdominal cavity. For that is an urinary diversion must be created. Most commonly is the ileal conduit. That means you make 
and ileum segment with the vascularity over the ileum you put both the end of the ureter the one end of the ureter ileum is closed the other end is connected with the exterior so it is called the ileal conduit through which you are connected a urine bag and the urine is accumulated in the bag which is called the ileal conduit or either both the ureter are on the both side your ureteral cuteness is just from me it must make an opening in the skin over there you can implant the ureter and over there put a some catheter on the both ureter which is connected into the bag which is called the urostomy or ureterostomy alternatively the bladder may be replaced with a new urinary reservoir which is called the orthopedic or orthotropic new bladder that means the site where the bladder present the bladder is removed then with the intestine you can open up the lumen make a bladder and implant it there a new bladder which is called the orthotropic new bladder in case of women the bladder is connected with the uterus then on the posteriorly there is rectum so for that is an anterior exenteration with pelvic lymphadenectomy anterior wall anterior part of the bladder and entry all the tissues are excised followed by urinary diversion and reconstructions other are some patient having presented with a very late case nothing can do possible <coughs> so in that case is only external beam radiotherapy which can kill to some extent of the cancer cells to relieve some symptoms but it is not possible to cure the disease so look Uh, this is the ileal conduit that means there is a ileal segment attached with the vascular artery means there so the segment is come here and the other cut to both and continuous anastomosis is there so the figure would go on that way and the cut end of the ileum closed the ureter is implanted it is come out exterior and the ureter that means that uh, ileum it just like an intersection if you place in the intersection manner so there is a continent conduit is not even came out through the intersection intersection stoma put a catheter subsequently you can drain the uh, ileal conduit there is a co- continent one the patient is a complete a continent one and a very feel convenient you move the bladder and this is diversion one the other is you make a new bladder there that means new bladder is constructed from intestine that means we will take intestine as segment open up another segment is attached there make a bladder but the vascularity must be attached otherwise the bladder wall is not survive because without vascularity that tissue become necrosed so this is called orthotropic new bladder it is more challenging operations So look your doctor has recommended that you undergo a TURBT procedure. TURBT stands for transurethral resection of bladder tumor. This animation will show you how a typical TURBT is performed. Before the surgery, you are either given a general anesthetic which puts you to sleep or a regional anesthesia which numbs the lower part of your body. The surgery will begin shortly after the anesthesia starts to work. So During this procedure, a thin tube called a resectoscope like a is inserted through your urethra and into your bladder. This resectoscope has a cutting tool, a light, and a camera at the end. The resectoscope is inserted through your urethra then into your bladder. In some cases, a dye may be used to improve tumor detection. This is a procedure also known as photodynamic diagnosis PDD cystoscopy. It enables the surgeon to see tumors that might not be detected otherwise. If used, the dye is introduced into the bladder 1 hour before the operation. This dye is absorbed by the tumor, which makes it glow red under the blue light. The surgeon is now able to locate the tumors more easily. A cutting tool is used to remove the tumor. Then so heat is applied on the surrounding area of the tumor to stop the bleeding. Now, the resectoscope is pulled out 
but the tissue is connected. Afterwards, an irrigation catheter will be inserted in your bladder. This is to flush the bladder and to prevent blood clots. The catheter remains in place by inflating the balloon at its tip. The catheter will be removed before you leave the hospital. So, th thank you for patient sharing and discussion. Now the session is open for question session. Do you have any question or query? Please ask. Yes, sir. I have two questions. Sir. Yes. Sir, my first question is, sir, if um, some patient are accidentally do um, so, or any routinely do any uh, plain X-ray abdomen or and uh, diagnosed as a calcified renal mass or there is calcification in the uh, renal area, then how can we differentiate between this calcified renal mass with renal stone? Yes, the in case of malignant lesion calcification, these are the sporadic, sporadic one, haphazard manner arrangement. It is not the central localized concentrated manner, one thing. The other thing is, if you do an ultrasonography, you can evaluate the calcification where it is. Is there an associated with the renal cyst wall calcification? Or there is no cyst wall within the renal tissue, there is a calcification. It is a renal plug. That means the papilla of the kidney, there is a projected within the calyces. The calyces there is a calcification, which is called the renal plug. That renal plug sometimes calcified and be presented as a calcification at the plain X-ray, which is not possible to evaluate without doing an ultrasonograph or without doing CT scan. By that two investigation, you can easily correlate and confirm that the lesion is a renal stone or the lesion is due to the calcification of the renal mass. Ultrasonography and CT scan, both are the two. You can correlate to each other. Then you can easily co comment about this. The lesion is a renal uh, calcification due to the malignancy or it is renal stone. Yes, okay. My, thank you, sir. My okay. second question is, sir, um, in vena cabal thrombectomy, uh, yes. sir, do you we remove only the thrombus or we also remove some part of uh, vena cabal? As we know, sir, we, during removal of uh, any kind of uh, cancerous tumor, we also remove some healthy part for uh, precaution. Yes, sir. but there is a, the, uh, you complete the question uh, more? Yes, sir, complete. Yeah, so you look, there is the tumor cells are metastasized by local invasion, permeation, embolization. These three things always remember. First, yes, sir. local invasion, then permeation, then embolization. So, in the Venagaba, it is a lying there as a permeation. The cells are one cell, two cell, three cells are touching one to each other, adherent with one each other. It does not infiltrate the Venagaba wall. So, if you make an incision and pull it out with the suction or the forceps, it can easily remove it out. So, in that cases, don't need for resection of the Venagaba. Because if you remove the vena cava, in that case, they are needed to vascular transposition, artificial venous transposition needed there. So, which is not either routinely done. But in case of vena cava involvement, the disease is also advanced. It is not the too early. So, when the disease process is too early, in that case, more sacrifice the tissues, more survival of the patient. But when the disease is to some extent advanced, there is sacrification of the tissues is declining. Operation done as far as possible without less sacrifice the normal tissues. So the vena cava is the important wall structure for that reason. In that case, don't go for the resection of the vena cava along with the tumor. No, you just open the vena cava, put a clamp over above and down so they stay there and make an incision and suck it out. Sometimes some open heart surgery may need it. If go into the into the into the atrium, in that case is heart open the heart and remove the clots also. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any more? No, sir. Salam alaikum. So, any other question? Hello, salam alaikum, sir. Waslam. Uh, sir, I have a question uh, regarding ideal conduit. Uh, yeah, in case of ileal conduit, we know or ileal conduit or orthotropic neobladder. We yeah. know, sir, uh, there is diversion of intestine. Yes. So, uh, is there any chance that uh, the fecal matter will pass through it? No. There is a three type of diversion. One is ileal conduit. One is orthotropic neobladder. Another one is ureter in front is the sigmoid colon. Uh, that means rectum or sigmoid colon. So, in case of whenever you both the ureter is implanted into the rectum, so the urine and fecal matter both are passes through the anus. In that cases, there is a chance of ascending infection of the E. coli from the uh, uh, prostate or from the rectum to the ureter. Only at that time. But whenever the ileal conduit, the continuation of the guard is transected. It, there is no luminal continuation. Only the vascular arcade are mm, survived there. Maintains there. The guard is divided both the end, the proximal and distal end are connected to each other. That segment is isolated. The one end is closed and another end is go exterior. So it does not continue with the fecal matter content. For that reason, there is no chance of fecal contamination of the ureter in case of ileal conduit. But okay, in so case of you. rectal in implantation, there is a chance of infection of the bacteria from the guard to the ureter. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Clear. Thank ah, you. Sir. Thank you. Any more? Uh, sir, uh, I have another question, sir. What is the basic basic difference between TURP and TURBT? So the basic difference is the mode of surgery is same. The TURP in in case of TURP, you resect the same instrument, just resect out the prostatic part of the urethra and enlarge prostatic tissue. But in case of TURBT, only the bladder wall, the tumor mass where lies at that part is chunk removed out. For that reason, the name and nomenclature is TURBT, transurethral resection of the bladder tumor. And tumor TURP is transurethral resection of the prostate. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Clear. Thank you. But there is the important thing is TURBT is dangerous than TURP because whenever the TURP done, the resection done in the prostatic urethra, it doesn't work at the distended bladder. If the bladder is more distended, there is no harm to some extent. But in case of bladder tumor resection, if the bladder is more distended, you at that time if you remove the tissue of the bladder wall, there is some perforation sometimes because the whenever the blood is distended it becomes thin one for that reason be cautious about the perforation of the bladder in case of bladder tumor is boom be cautiously can do it otherwise there is every possibility to injure to the bladder this is the basic key point to alert during surgery of the tumor bt any more question no sir thank you thank you so after that, uh, we are clear about the urinary systems. Day after tomorrow, we started uh, along with the hepatobiliary system. So we start our learning from hepatobiliary system. So thank you everybody. Thank you for patient sharing. Thank you.